Welcome back to Online Permit Search. My name is Toby with Homestar Inspections. When reviewing a property located in the city of Boca Raton, you first need to determine that the municipality responsible for issuing permits is indeed the city of Boca Raton. You do that by going to the property appraiser's website from Palm Beach County, which is located at pbcgov.org forward slash PAPA. My example today is going to be 310 Northeast 2nd Street, Boca. And on the property detail page, you're going to get a lot of information. The first thing I like to do is verify the street address. And then the second row down, you can see on the left here, is the municipality. So this property is indeed located in the city of Boca Raton which is also supported by the fact that the parcel control number, the first two digits are 06. So moving forward, you know that any property located in Palm Beach County that has a parcel control number beginning with 06 is gonna be in the city of Boca. And on the right over here is gonna give you an aerial view of the property. This property looks like it has a pitched roof here and a flat roof that wraps around the right side and back elevation of the property. Lastly, I'd like to also look at the year built because the city of Boca Raton building department only goes back so far as do a lot of these building departments. Year built of this property is 1955. And it also goes into more detail about the types of uh, space and, and how it's used, the use of this space on the right side over here. In order to get a little more detail, if you go over here to the view building details and click on it, It'll give you more information. Again, the year built, the bedroom, bathrooms, these websites are never 100% accurate. So keep in mind that this information has to still be verified with the building department if there's anything that might be an issue. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the base area of this property is 1110 square feet. And if you go up to this aqua area here, you see 1110 square feet. That's the base area. Then you got finished storage, finished enclosed porch, and then a finished carport. The total square foot is 2009. The total area under air is 1110. So you have a difference of about 901 square feet there between the total square footage of everything here and what's under air. And this aqua place right here, according to this website, states that the uh, area under air is only this aqua area. So keep that in mind because if you're making an offer on the property and they actually have everything under air, there might be an issue with the appraiser and, and thus the value of the, the property that they're trying to sell. With the information of the year built, you go to our website, which is located at homestarinspectionsfl.com where you can schedule now or permit search, click on permit search. Scroll down to Palm Beach County. And the first one I have here is gonna be an unincorporated Palm Beach County. And then all the cities that are incorporated are gonna be in alphabetical order. The third one down is Boca Raton. There's a reminder that the parcel ID or parcel control number begins with 06. And there's two situations with this website. It only goes back to 1996. So before 1996, you must do a micro, uh, microfilm request and you click here and that form will be uh, populated. You fill that out and you send it in. For any information from 1996 until today, you're actually going to click here. Okay, this is the landing page for the building department for City of Boca. You can see that it looks similar to other building departments in Broward County and Palm Beach County. A lot of these cities use the same software systems. Uh, so once you learn it, it's pretty easy and you can it'll help you navigate other building departments as well. At the top here, you see the drop down box has application number. You want to click on that and go to address and then type in your street number. This example again is 310 Northeast 2nd Street. A lot of these websites, some websites want you to put the suffix in there, like the ND, and some don't. Let's go ahead and test this website and see what happens. And then you put the suffix, for, which is street, and hit continue. 
you can see that no, no results returned. So if we take this ND off of there and hit continue, see what happens? So some of these websites do not require or do not like you putting any suffix on the street name, uh, such as ND for second or RD for third. So this displays 10 at a time. You can always change that to 25, 50, or 100. You can go ahead and just put 100 right away because we don't know yet how many permits are online from since 1996. You scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see showing one to 18 of 18 entries. So this website's only displaying 18 entries from 1996. Going back to the top, we have multiple different columns here. The first one is the application number. That's going to be a two-digit number, rep which represents the year that the permit was applied, followed by uh, the rest of the permit number. So the next column is going to be address, then your postal control number, the contractor or other name, application type, so the type of permit, and then the status of that permit. Uh, status is important, it, particularly with purchase transactions, as title companies might got, not get to any open or expired permits up front. As an added service, we do this for free with all of our inspections. We'll let you know if there's any uh, open or expired permits as soon as we inspect the property, if it's available online. And then we'll let you know so you can jump on it and you don't get stuck in a time crunch. The important part of that is that the title companies want to make sure there's no uh, liens on the property and an open or expired permit could indicate a mechanics lien by a contractor. And that's the last column there. And you can alphabetize these columns just by clicking on these headers. But we'll go ahead and keep it as it is right now. So the first one right here is for a roof permit. That's kind of one of the most important things I look for when I review properties online, because that's going to tell me the eight, the date the roof was last pulled, and then the type of system is going to let us know on average if there's any life expectancy on this roof. Of course, that's only an industry average. You always have to review the roof condition on site. It, some conditions can accelerate the deterioration of the roof, and some situations like a very well-pitched, light color roof might last a lot longer. If you look at the first and second row, these are identical in permit number, and that means that these two rows are for the same permit, and it's been closed out. Uh, in order to determine if this roof is actually for the flat and the pitch, sometimes this roof, a roof permit doesn't automatically mean that both roofing systems were replaced. You have to dig into it to make sure that they cover both roofing systems. Going back to the property appraiser's website and to the top, you'll see that there's that pitched area and then the flat area right here. Particularly if that flat area is structurally attached to the rest of the roof, we want to make sure we get that information. So going back to the building department, there's a hyperlink on the permit numbers. Whenever there's a uh, chance for me to right click and open link in a new tab, I do that because sometimes if you click on these hyperlinks and then go back too many times, it'll kick you out and then you have to retype all the information in again, um, which is not the end of the world, but it, it just uh, wastes some time. So you can see that open a new tab right here. Click on that. And this is some more information on that roof permit. It tells you the, the contractor that is closed out. Uh, the square footage, 2,900. That's good because that can help suggest that the uh, roof was actually fully replaced. Uh, again, if you go back to the property appraiser's website and scroll down to the uh, total square footage right there, it says 2000. The building permit says 2900. Well, that pitch roof is going to create more of a surface area. So this information right here suggests that it's for both roofing systems. And to verify it a little bit further, I like to go to the inspection status tab where it'll give you some, some of the similar information, the application date, which will be important for the wind mitigation uh, as far as credit's concerned. Wind mitigation likes to see any roofing system applied for on or after March 1st of 2002. That gives you really good credit. So both 
th this roofing system, whatever this permit covers, was applied for after that date. So that's a good credit on the wind mitigation. Down here, there's another hyperlink. And again, following my rule, I right click, open link in a new tab, just so it doesn't lock me out. And this gives us all the inspection types. NOC, that's when the notice of commencement, that work is being done on the property, gets submitted to the building department. Roof tin cap, that is when the underlayment is attached to the sheathing or plywood of the roof, and that requires an inspection. And that was done on the second. Flat roof in progress. Well, there you go. We have, informa we have information right here that this was at least inclusive of the flat roof because that has to be inspected during the uh, installation as the inspectors want to see how it's being applied to make sure that's being applied correctly. They can't just come after the fact and say, okay, it was done correct. They don't know how it was installed. So that requires an in-progress inspection always on the flat roof. Also tile or asphalt shingle uh, requires in-progress uh, in inspection as well uh, because they need to see how the uh, the tiles or the asphalt shingles are, are installed. Some asphalt shingles require a certain shuffling as they get it installed, and also the nails are, are exposed. Whereas if you inspect it after the fact, there's no way to see that process. So this one, the roof tile in progress, it was disapproved on the 28th. And then whatever the disapproval was for, they, they went ahead and corrected it. And the next day they got it approved and then the final. So this roofing permit suggests that both roofing systems were installed uh, with an application date of 11-7-2002 and it was closed out. Going back to the building department website, we scroll down. The next permit down was AC change out. Not really concerned about that. The uh, In 2021, there was a demolition permit uh, for the entire building that was withdrawn. And then, and that actually takes up three rows. So you can see the same permit number can take up multiple rows. Some take up one, two, three, five, maybe even more. So just because there's 18 records, that does not mean there's 18 separate permits. It could be just a handful of permits that make up 18 different rows. Below that, you have another permit that says permit issued. That means that this should be an open permit. Of course, there can be mistakes. You know, we're all human. The building department could forget or have an issue with trying to close it out. You always want to contact them and say, okay, what's the status of this permit? Find out from the seller what the status of that permit is, if it will be closed out within a timely fashion. It could be just a clerical error, like I had mentioned. I've, I've run into that before. Um, but this one's for demolition again in, in 2022. So it looks like they want to demolish this house and maybe build something new. And something interesting about this permit, you can see that this same permit number, which is identified here on the first column, takes up five rows. So five of those 18 records are all the same permit. Scrolling down, we have a permit from 1998 for shutter. That should suggest that those shutters on the property are going to be hurricane impact rated because anything in Broward County that was installed after September 1st of 1994 is going to require to be uh, passing a, a hurricane impact test. And it would not pass inspection if it were not uh, properly uh, installed and also properly qualified to be installed in this area. And this one takes up two permits two rows. One below that is an American window and screen company. So that might be just a window or a door or a screen taking up two rows. And below that from 03 is a plumbing and irrigation permit. And that's it. So there's only one roof permit. We know that it was installed on or after March 1st of 2002, which is great for the wind mitigation. The roofing systems, it could be tile, it could be asphalt shingle. Just because it says tile on the roofing permit does not necessarily determine that it is tile. It could be asphalt shingle. Sometimes they just have the tile as like a placeholder on there. The type of roofing system is going to be verified uh, during the inspection. But if you're interested in making an offer on this property and you, you can find out from the seller 
or the listing agent if the roofing system is indeed tile or asphalt shingle. The flat roofing system is going to be modified by Tumen most likely, which has a 10 to 15 year maximum life expectancy. And in this case, that flat roof is already over 20 years old. So unless the flat roofing system was replaced and for some reason the permit's not showing up or maybe there was never a permit pulled, they would have to supply information that can verify that the roof was indeed replaced. Um, if not, then insurance purposes might be a hindrance on this uh, property as the insurance companies like to see a minimum, bare minimum of three years life expectancy. Typically everyone will write policies for a five or, or plus year life expectancy on any type of roofing system. With this flat roof, it's already at 20 plus years and it's really hard to get life expectancy beyond that. So knowing that upfront, you can make an offer uh, and maybe budget to replace the roof right away so you can get better insurance or maybe you can get insurance coverage uh, altogether. The pitched roof, if it's a taller roof, taller roofs in South Florida have a 25 to 30 year life expectancy on average, and then the asphalt shingle, depending on the type, there's three tab, there's architectural, can be anywhere from 15 to 20 year life expectancy. Those are average. You always have to review the condition of the roof on site as the, you know, the roofing system could be deteriorated faster, or it could ha be constructed in such a manner that it's actually, uh, uh, higher pitch, lighter colors, something that sheds water better, uh, that can all help prolong the life of the, of the roof. So again, these are just average life expectancies. You always need to review the condition of the roof on site. Uh, that's how you peruse the City of Boca website. If you have any questions, read out, reach out to us directly by either calling us or uh, emailing me at toby at homestarinspectionsfl.com. And you can always uh, reach out to us through our website, which is homestarinspectionsfl.com. Take care.